Stacy, and welcome to the kitchen of my old Kentucky home. Today, we're going to feature an over 100-year-old Louisville culinary creation as we show you how to do oysters and champagne Louisville style. For our Louisville rolled oysters, here's what we'll need. A pint and a half of oysters, a cup of cornmeal, a quarter cup of milk, one egg, a half a cup of white flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and at least two cups of canola oil or lard. So we're gonna start by sifting our first three dry ingredients. We've got our all-purpose flour. You can use self-rising too, it's not gonna rise. Our baking powder and our salt. This is kosher salt. I'm sure you can also use table salt if that's all that you have. And then we're gonna sift this. Now, when we've done this before, you can, we've talked about you can use a hand crank uh, sifter, uh, but if you don't have one, this works just as well, a little uh, colander sieve. You can just kind of shake it through or you can push it through. And this is just going to get the um, dry ingredients just a little more fine of a powder than what it was originally. So see how nice and powdery that looks, okay? We're going to push this off to the side and we've got our cornmeal and next we're going to mix our wet ingredients. So we're going to take the quarter cup of milk and I got a local um, country milk in here. It's whole milk. It's nice and sweet. And then if you don't, you need to save at least two uh, tablespoons of the oyster liqueur and add to that. If there wasn't enough, you can also increase the milk to about a third of a cup because we just need it uh, nice and moist. I'm just gonna crack one egg into this. I'll whisk these wet ingredients. All right, now for the fun part. We're gonna take our wet ingredients and mix them into our sifted flour mixture. Get that nice and mixed. And this, hit, this has the egg, the milk, and the oyster liqueur in it. It's nice and wet. And then we're simply going to take three oysters at a time and roll them around in this batter. We're gonna then dredge them in the cornmeal uh, mix. And then we're gonna do that again uh, before we put them on our prepared baking sheet. And this is just wax paper on a baking sheet. So the fun part. So I've got these nice juicy oysters. Um, I think these were Chesapeake. You can use Blue Point, or whatever you've got on hand. And we're just gonna mix this around, get this nice and coated, and then just in a lump together, that's a culinary term, right? We're gonna take them over to the cornmeal I'm gonna dredge them in this. And then I've seen some cookbooks that say um, to do this again. So I always think um, twice, no more is best. So we're gonna do that. So one more coating of the, the wet with the flour, one more into the cornmeal. And then we're just gonna put this little packet, if you will, onto our baking sheet and we're gonna make out a couple of the more of these but you only want to cook one or two at a time in a prepared skillet and I've got some canola oil heating we're gonna heat that up to 375 so we're gonna take a couple of these over to the stove okay we have our cast iron skillet heated up with about two almost two and a half cups of canola oil you can also use lard as I mentioned and we're getting it to 375. My thermometer broke, uh, so we're not gonna be able to have an exact measure, but one way you can check is to just put a little cornmeal and see if it sizzles up. So I think we're ready for frying. Okay, we're just gonna take our little oyster packets and ever so carefully drop them into the grease. And as I said, you only wanna do one, maybe two at a time because you don't wanna crowd the pan. And we're just gonna let this um, come to almost a golden brown. You can just kind of tell from how that's bubbling up and I want to crank it up a little higher. Okay, I flipped this first one. I just can kind of tell it's been about two minutes, but I could just kind of tell from the, the crust on the bottom what color that was getting, and so it looked about right to me. I'm going to flip the other. And again, we're just looking for that color underneath to turn the same, this golden brown. We'll give it about another two minutes to take them off. So what goes better with oysters than champagne? Let's go watch Jessica make a champagne cocktail with that Kentucky special ingredient, bourbon, while I fry up the rest of these oysters. 
So today I'm gonna to do my own riff on a classic champagne cocktail. Usually these are made with just champagne, a sugar cube and bitters, or champagne, a sugar cube, brandy and bitters. But today we're gonna to be using Kentucky bourbon, of course. I'm also gonna use vanilla extract, sugar cube, orange peel for garnish, orange bitters, and champagne. So what we're gonna do is just take your sugar cube and put it on a spoon over your uh, champagne glass. We can just build this right into the cocktail glass. I'm gonna take orange bitters and saturate the sugar cube with the bitters. And then I'm also gonna use my eyedropper tool here, which is very handy, to get a little bit of that vanilla extract. And we're just gonna do about three drops of the vanilla extract, not as much as with the bitters. So then you can go ahead and just drop that sugar cube, not an ice cube, right into the bottom of the champagne glass. And we're gonna use one ounce of bourbon. And then we're gonna top this with our champagne. And then we're gonna just slowly add in our champagne so that it doesn't fizz over the bottle. And what the sugar cube is gonna do is while you're enjoying the cocktail, you're gonna get a nice release of like the effervescence from the bubbles throughout the whole time as that sugar is dissolving. So there we go, we're all topped off with champagne and I'm just gonna get a little bit of our orange peel here, just the outside, not the pith part peeled off nicely there. See how there's not very much white on the inside there, and we just want to get a little bit of those essential oils squeezed out and rubbed around the rim of the glass. I'm just gonna drop it right in there for our bubbling over cocktail. Well, Jessica, this is such an elegant cocktail, another one of your originals. Yes. And remind me, what are you calling it? Okay, so this is called the bubbling over, okay. and I actually had Jordan help me come up with a name for it today. And so I was telling you about the ingredients in the cocktail, and immediately when he thought of sugar cubes, he was thinking about how you give horses a sugar cube oh, as sure. a treat. Yeah. So then we thought we'd look into some derby winners, some past derby winners for inspiration. And in 1926, bubbling over won the derby, and that's perfect for a champagne drink with a Kentucky twist. That is so clever. Isn't that fun? I love Leave that. Leave it to Jordan. You guys are awesome <laughs> that way. Awesome. <laughs> Well, this is certainly not a new dish. No. I actually grew up eating these too. Yeah, right? Uh, but my grandma, instead of using cornmeal, she would crush up saltine crackers and use that as the coating on the outside. I, in my research for this recipe, I've seen that. In fact, I've had, I think they use crackers at Chex, one of my favorite places to right get Right by them. my house. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think Kingfish might too. Um, they're, those are the two restaurants I know that still carry these yeah. after all these years. Well, where did the original come from? So this is a really interesting story. So in my research, you know, something like we have grown up with, but apparently over a hundred years ago, and there's, um, like a lot of culinary traditions, there's, um, different theories on it. And the sure. theories were that two, two, um, restaurateurs, um, come to mind. Philip Mazzoni and his brothers had a tavern, um, on Third Street downtown, and Mazzoni's only recently closed, you know, several years ago. It was a restaurant I remembered. I never made it there. Never made mm -hmm. it there. Um, it's a Queen of Sheba now, the, the oh, last, yeah. the last uh, one of them. But um, so the story goes that they were an Italian immigrant family, and they made this pastry and, and did the oysters, and they sold them at their saloon as a way to um, get people to drink more beer or whiskey. So oh. I thought that was cute. Yeah, but there I was, wish they would still do that. That's right. <laughs> but there was another guy at the time, his name was Al Kolb, and I had not heard of them before I did a little more digging. He claimed that his mother brought the recipe from New Orleans, which is also a very heavily um, immigrant Italian area. So who knows, they battled that, that out for years. But by the late 1800s, early 19th century, mm -hmm. um, this became a very popular snack in Louisville, and it really was invented in the city. And some people were like, well, oysters, you know, we were in it in sure. down. Um, it was because of well, another one of those reasons of the steamboat. Um, it brought them in from the East Coast, so oysters have just always been abundant. So this has been a, a popular snack for over 100 yeah. years. Yep. The river has brought us oysters and bourbon. It so. has, right? So be thankful for that. That's right. So cheers <laughs> to that. And for um, more recipes like this, continue to follow us on culinarylouisville.com. And we'll see you next time on bourbon and biscuits. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.